So what's up everyone? Welcome back to your channel, Brighter Life Institute. I am Alicia. I want to talk to you today about how certain romantic and intimate relationship end. From love to hate and why some ex-partner picture the ex-lover to be the worst person on the planet. Like they have some kind of goal to hate you, to dislike you, to make you the worst human being that there is out there. Some people in our society do not enter a romantic relationship in the intention for it to last. They don't enter a romantic relationship to want good for their partner, to see it as something that this is not going to be a six month, a one year, a 10 year connection. This is the one, this is the person I want to build up with. And when we go to this word build up, it means, and this is life and this is reality. I say it, this is life and this is reality. Because many people in our society are, have an expectation of a love partner that is truly unrealistic. They have watched too much movie or they have this dream about what uh, or idea what romantic relationship should be. Many people don't even know what a romantic relationship means. What commitment means. Many people freak out when they hear the word commitment because they misunderstand what it is. They misunderstand what marriage means. They misunderstand what to have somebody as a boyfriend, a girlfriend mean. They don't adjust the behavior because they don't understand that they have entered something, a silent agreement, cert, but there is something that is taking place that many people out there don't even realize that they have entered. Many people in our society enter a relationship for the wrong reason. One, the biggest one, is they enter a relationship because they feel lonely. The second one, some people may enter a relationship because they need sex. They are horny, they are lonely and horny. And some people may enter a relationship because they need to use somebody. They have bad intention. They need to boost their ego. It can be that they need to be saved from something. They have some financial issue and they need some support. Or to grab on on somebody. Somebody that sometimes can have a very good situation in life. A good job, a good home, a car, and financially stable. They have status in a society and they have certain benefit, potential about them and that would motivate some people to want to have a relationship with that person. Yes, it's so easy to be in a relationship with somebody that has it all, that boosts your ego that help you with the bills, that serve in your interests, that, you know, you can kind of have as a helper for your life at your service. But many people, when you look, 
they has they have nothing to add to the other they are empty and their behavior suck but to get back to the subject of this video why some relationship goes from love to hate why certain partner are going around for some time or some time for years talking badly about the ex-partner some will kill the ex-partner some will throw acid on their face so they cannot get anybody else some will make it the mission in life to discover some secret about you so they can spread it and destroy your, your life so what exactly is behind this passion that is happening after a breakup by the way i would like to say that for me the end of a relationship doesn't happen at the breakup that a breakup may be the real start of a relationship because when you meet somebody you don't really talk about what you want or what you don't want by the end of the relationship there are so many complain about what you did not do what they expected what they want something that they don't do and they don't tell you at the start of a relationship so sometimes a breakup can be the real start of a real relationship if people have the ability and the potential and the desire to work now for real to the relationship. The personality type of INFJ, that is the rarest personality type in the world. Rarest, less than 1% globally of people are INFG. Why I'm saying this and I'm bringing this up is because clearly this personality type see things differently. They also been described to be the most caring and loyal and they care a lot about people and their partner. The personality type of INFJ also have the ability to be the healer they are recognized to be really good in psychology so when the INFJ enter a romantic relationship it usually start with a one-to-one -one. as INFJ don't like the group they like having a one-to-one -one connection with the people INFJ don't care about your job your money your statue and the rest what an INFJ care about is your quality of heart and from the moment you enter the life of an INFJ they give the most 100% many people perceive the giving of an INFJ to be too much too much giving too much care too much with everything for most people out would there the way the INFJ is is perceived to be the top the top over the top than 100 person for an INFJ the way they perceive their giving and their care is actually falling below the five percent so there is a problem of perception regarding uh, this personality type for an INFJ there is nothing special that they are doing but for other people the way the INFJ is is extremely rare and extremely uh, unique the reason most people perceive the INFJ care this way is as I mentioned already at the start of this video many people have bad intention toward their partner intimate romantic relationship many people don't even understand what a romantic relationship mean what having a boyfriend a girlfriend a wife a husband mean they don't understand and confuse what commitment is 
Some people confuse commitment to be controlled or lose a freedom. When commitment is pretty much the desire to serve the best interests of your partner. Many people are freaked out by marriage and I understand it because men, there's some women out there, they change when they get married. They behave like they're the queen of the world when they have nothing to offer, letting the guy running around and they have nothing to add to the relationship. So understand how certain people out there and mainly guys are freaked out about marriage. They should be. But regarding the person staff at INFG, this is somebody that cares a lot. Some people out there are really never experienced this in their life. Many people never experienced it to meet somebody that truly cares for them. And INFG really care. They go deep, they want to help, they are the natural healer. And you feel good around an INFG. You feel at home, you feel at peace, you feel healed, you feel understood, you feel really safe. That's something that many people are out there that experience some kind of trauma or let down by other, never experience it. So it can be addictive to be with an INFG. A certain people may be taking for granted the way the INFG are with them, the care they get from the INFG. Some people may abuse the INFG and take them for granted. Some people may just take, take, take and never think to give something back. So we can get to a situation that the personal type of INFG will see all of that. Not only they will see all of that, but they start to see that you are not giving, you are not involved, you are doing certain things that is not okay. INFJ is perfectionist in every level of things they are doing. They may not be the best, but they give their best, their very best, especially when it's concerning their partner. So certain people may not even realize that they're bringing pain to an INFG. Forcing after a certain time, and for some people, they feel like INFG just closing the door to them. One minute the INFG cared, and one minute they don't care. And they get confused about that. They feel like they've been played by the INFG, and the INFG is a joke, and INFG never cared about them. For an INFG, it is really confusing how in earth they came to this conclusion. Most INFJ will tell their partner when something is not right. They may say it uh, in a way that maybe the other don't understand. This is serious. It could be something that is perceived by the other to be small. But they don't understand, and that's the problem. They don't understand that they are with this INFJ person that perceive that uh, has a high standard of expectation regarding their relationship with everybody that is called friends, or intimate relationship. So yes, some people may not get the message. They may just understand my partner is not happy about this or they may not even realize it because in the same time that this is happening, INFJ keep giving, keep being there. So they, uh, some partner may think like, well, if she was uh, not happy, then she will not keep caring because that's the way they are. Some people, when they're not happy, may go to silent treatment with their partner or walk away or cheat. May INFJ doesn't do that. What amazed me in all of this is how many partner 
not just mine, but other relationship out there that fall apart. What amazed me a lot is many of them do not talk about the reason of the breakup. They just picture that the person was not good, that they just been left, that they will not care about and blah blah blah. But they never talk about the possible reason why somebody that loved them may have end the relationship. And it really made the things worse. Clearly these people don't know who I am. They forgot who I am or they don't want to remember. They also don't know anything or have not taken seriously that I'm an INFJ. Anyone that you're in a relationship with that say that they are an INFJ, if they truly are, because there are so many people that claim to be, but they are not, you need to understand you're dating somebody that sees things differently. There is a reason why this personality type is the rarest. And I'm not saying that to brag, but it is a reality. And saying that, INFJ also need to be conscious that others are not like them. Yes, what they're doing and how they see things, they see it simple, like it's nothing. But clearly for other people to care, to give, to, to do all the stuff that INFJ feel is nothing. For other, it's a lot. It's a lot. Breaking up is hard for some people. And some people really don't know how to manage their feeling and emotion. They can get lost in an agony, a pain that they don't know how to manage. And for some people, the only way they can manage the pain and the feeling and emotion they get from the situation is to hate you. They try to hate you. They try to picture you as the worst person ever. And this work for some time, but if some people still, you know, um, in this very negative blockage of emotion toward their ex-partner, despite some people, they are already in a relationship with somebody else, but they're still in that negative place regarding their um, ex-partner. They convince themselves that they really don't care about the ex-partner and that this ex-partner mean, mean nothing to them. And some of them fail to see how much they still feel about that ex-partner. They have not moved uh, from the pain they felt and it seemed to have grown. It seemed to have grown to a dislike, a hostility, a hate toward the person. It's very dangerous when people um, get this. Breaking up is hard in himself. You have to find a way to move from we back to me. Disintegral your life and heal enough to look to the future. 
for some people as I mentioned in this video that was never a we it was always me the selfish you know focus to me me what I can get me um, you know it is the me that was never a we but the other person they are with maybe they saw a we and they gave as a we and they cared and for some people they only realize that this person really cared after everything is is over after the person walked away person walked away because they've been taken by granted by that relationship the reason some people are picturing their ex like the worst person that they start to devalue their ex-partner when a relationship end and it depends how it end some people or both people are upset no, I haven't never met people that just had um, a breakup and they, they're happy both of those people usually go through some negative emotion but what happened when the end of a relationship is charged with unrelenting and unresolved anger and rather than blowing out gracefully and move on your ex instead allow that anger to fuel bad behavior which can damage your reputation your ex may be saying terrible things about you and may be revealing personal information, distorting the truth, gossiping about a private mistake that was made when you were together or even spreading rumor about you. Sometimes the information begins with the ex and sometimes the ex simply serve to fuel the negative information. When your relationship dissolves and you find yourself with a spiteful ex, there is no telling how far the anger will go or whom it will reach. Now that they are no longer trying to please you or make things work between you, they might feel they have a license to say anything they want that can take the form of cyberbullying if information is spread online where it can go viral very quickly. It can do harm to your integrity as well as your self-esteem. But yes, it's truly disappointing that some people don't manage to fix their relationship. Maybe they don't want to, but when, but then why bother going around talking so much about the bad quality of your partner if you don't care anymore? Just move on, take somebody else and forget. If somebody are putting so much effort to check you out, to stalk you, to Try to find the worst things about you so they can feel justified and feel good with themselves that they did not lose a good thing. It's because they still care. Let's be real. If you still care and still to do that because that doesn't fix anything. That doesn't do anything. If you still care Try to look at the reason why the person left you. Or ask. Many people don't ask why the person 
are not talking to them anymore while the relationship ended. They only put themselves in the place of a victim and making the other the worst person on earth. That work for some time. It may give you peace and make you feel justified and feel good about what you're doing right now. But that does not do anything. So the reason some partner out there go from love to hate and a picture in the ex-partner as the worst person on earth in my opinion is because they still care true love doesn't disappear true love can be transformed but never end true love never goes away it only get blocked it get blocked inside the person because they fear to be rejected again and that's really truly what it is if they fear to be rejected again, it's because they have not understood what was the problem in the first place. If you don't ask what's the problem, how you expect to understand what was the problem? Loyalty to be true, the quality of heart is what make a 9 FJ be interested by you in the first place. They don't care about your job, your money, your statue, and who else you think you are. Your quality of heart is what interests the INFJ and always will be. When your quality of heart is showing that you did trying to hurt somebody that was there for you, that did good for you, but you did something. There's something in the relationship that happened. You don't want to look at the reason. And that's the best you can do. Get out of here. Never think to ever contact an INFJ that you treat like that. INFJ are not stupid. They are not people pleaser. And if you have the bad luck to fall on a Sigma INFJ, be prepared for battle. Take your armor because you're going to need it. INFJ are truly people that care. They are happy if you are happy with somebody else. They don't push it. People that are going around trying to find something to say about the ex-partner that they have let down, that they did something, that they brought some misery, some mess, some stuff that doesn't belong to a healthy relationship and they still don't get it. <sighs> Those people will never be back in a life in our energy. And I hope you too, if you get that, this person is not coming back in your life. That is the video I wanted to make today. It's okay to feel the crush, to feel you have lost somebody, to feel they maybe have mistreated you. But look closely. Somebody that loved you would not end a relationship for no reason, especially not INFJ people. If you cannot look the reason, just be quiet and go. Go in peace. Because energy have no problem to take a war, even if it's against the person they love the most. Years later, still trying so, to find some negativity. Try to see who the ex are dating, where the ex are living, where the ex are working, what they are doing, and then whatever they found, they always lower it to not be good enough. The hell with you. Get on with your life already. Move. 
Don't you have anything better to do? That is the video I wanted to make today. For some of you that are dealing with the ex-partner that behave in this way, it's over. It's over. A next partner that try to destroy you is one that has no place in your future. A next partner that shed your bed and everything else, and especially if it's a next partner that forced your hand, the, your action to leave the relationship and still don't get it, and the best they can do is trying to ruin your reputation talking about you badly with other people, adding zero value to anything, they cannot ever come back to your life. And I hope many of you understand that it's not acceptable for a next partner or ever a present partner to be your enemies, to behave as an enemy. If this person is behaving like an enemy, take it, it as a search. Take your armor and prepare for battle. And make sure that you take this battle with passion. With passion. If you still love the person, bring in it with passion. If they don't know what love is, it's time they find out what love is. Love them hard. If they want to destroy you, love them the best that you can by not allowing them to walk over you just because they cannot under to take the part of the responsibility of the failure of the relationship. No, we say no. So I thank you today to have watched your channel Brighter Life Institute. I'm Alicia and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.